Hi, and welcome to our video on section 8.5, which is used properties of trapezoids and kites. So far in this chapter, we've learned about the parallelogram family. Specifically within that family, we've learned about squares, rectangles, and rhombuses. Today we're going to be learning about trapezoids and kites, which are not in the parallelogram family. These are two separate families, the trapezoid family and the kite family. You probably have seen these figures before, but now we're going to learn the important properties of them. So the objective is to use the properties of trapezoids and kites to calculate missing side and angle measures. So first thing I want to talk about is what is a trapezoid? Well, definition of a trapezoid is that it has only one pair of parallel sides. So Here's a trapezoid. One pair of parallel sides, the other two sides are not parallel. The sides that are parallel are called the bases. And then the second property is that the consecutive non-base angles are supplementary. So if we label our angles that means that angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180. Angle 3 plus angle 4 also equals 180. So 1 and 4 are the base angles. 2 and 3 are base angles. They're the angles that share the same base. So then the non-base angles would be 1 and 2, 3 and 4. Those are really the only two important properties of a trapezoid. Now within that trapezoid family, is a figure called an isosceles trapezoid. So this is still a trapezoid. So I'm going to write it has all properties of a trapezoid. But then it has three more important properties. Now remember that we've heard isosceles before when it comes to triangles. An isosceles triangle has two legs that are congruent. An isosceles trapezoid also has two legs that are congruent. So if we draw ourselves our little trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides, so it's a trapezoid, legs are congruent, that makes it an isosceles trapezoid. Beyond that, the diagonals are congruent. And then the last thing is that the base angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to this one, this angle is congruent to that one. And then um, the consecutive non-base angles are still supplementary like they were before. Okay, so that's one another family. We have the parallelogram family, we now have the trapezoid family, and then the kite falls into a family by itself. It's not a parallelogram, it's not a trapezoid. Kite has four important properties. Um, the first one is it has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So this pair of sides is congruent, this pair of sides is congruent. Again, they're the ones next to each other, the consecutive sides. And then the second property is that the diagonals are perpendicular. If I draw in one diagonal, I draw in the other diagonal, they're going to be perpendicular. One diagonal is bisected. Okay, so in a parallelogram, both diagonals are bisected. In a kite, that's not the case. In this case, in the kite, this diagonal is going to be bisected. The other diagonal is not necessarily bisected. And then the last property is that one pair of opposite, si opposite angles, I mean, are congruent. In this case here, this angle is congruent to this angle. It's always the angles that are connected by the bisected diagonal. So the two angles I just highlighted are congruent, 
and then all four angles add up to be 180 since it's a quadrilateral. Okay, so I know that this is a lot of properties, but we're going to continue by applying them. So moving on, it says calculate the missing angle measures, for examples 1, 2, and 3. Example 1, we know is a trapezoid. Well, it's actually an isosceles trapezoid. I have one pair of parallel sides. That makes it a trapezoid. And then the legs are congruent. So this is an isosceles trap. Okay, so one thing I know is that my base angles are congruent. So if angle J is 110 degrees, angle H is also 110 degrees. That's part of isosceles trapezoids. I also know in every trapezoid, the consecutive non-base angles are supplementary. So in this case, that means that angle F plus angle J equals 180. That's because if you picture this to be a transversal, those are consecutive interior angles. So angle F plus 110 equals 180. If I subtract 180, I get angle F to be 70 degrees. So F is 70 degrees. Again, base angles are congruent. So if angle S, F is 70 degrees, then angle G is also 70 degrees. Moving on to example two. This is a kite now. We have two pairs of congruent sides. They're not opposite, they're consecutive. Um, so we're looking at this kite right here. One important property of kites we know is that there's one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. Now, that could mean that J and L are congruent, or it means that M and K are congruent. Well, J and L, we can tell, are clearly not congruent. They don't even look congruent. But M and K actually do look congruent. So if M is 88, K is going to be 88. And you know because they're the angles connecting the sides that are not congruent. What I mean by that is ML is not congruent to JM. That's why I choose this angle. LK is not congruent to JK, which is why I choose this angle. That's why those are the two angles that are congruent. Now, to find angle J, I know that all four angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360. So I'm going to do 88 plus 88 plus 120 plus angle J equals 360. This simplifies to be 296 add angle J equals 360. Subtract 296, I get angle J is 64 degrees. Okay, right now pause the video and try this example on your own, please. You're going to have to use the same idea as in the example that we just did. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. This is a kite again. We have two pairs of congruent um, consecutive sides. So I know that there's going to be one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. 60 and 50 are not congruent. That means M and K are going to be congruent. So I'm going to call them X and X. And now all, all four of these angles add up to be three, 360. So I have 60 add 50 add X add X equals 360. This leaves me with 2x equals 250 and x equals 125. So the measure of angle M is the same as the measure of angle K, which is 125 degrees. Again, you know it's these angles because JK is not congruent to KL, so I pick angle K. JM is not congruent to ML, so I pick angle M. It's always the angles that are connecting the sides that are not congruent. Those angles are the ones that are congruent. Hopefully that went well. Um, we have some more examples, and then we have something else to talk about. So move to the next page, please. Okay, so example number four says, what is the perimeter of RATS, quadrilateral RATS? Um, so we notice that this quadrilateral is a kite, again. We have two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Consecutive just means sides next to each other. So we are told that RT is 24. 
we notice that we have two diagonals. One of the important properties of a kite is that one diagonal is bisected. In this case, RT is going to be bisected. So this part is congruent to this part. Uh, SA cannot be the one that's bisected because the two parts are 20 and 12. They're not congruent. So if RT is 24, that means this little part is 12. This little part is 12. Now I'm looking for the perimeter of RATS. So really I just have two sides that I need to solve for. I need to solve for this side, AT, and then RA is going to be congruent. And I need to solve for ST, and then RS will also be congruent. Well, I'm going to notice that I have four little right triangles. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. First, I'm going to start by finding y. I have 20 squared plus 12 squared equals y squared, because y is the um, hypotenuse. This ends up being 544 equals y squared. And now I need to break down. So 544 is 16 times 34. 16 is 4 and 4, which is a pair. 34 is 2 and 17. Can't do anything with that. So y ends up being 4 root 34. The 4 on the outside comes from that pair of 4s. The 34 comes from the 2 multiplied by the 17. So marking that on my figure, this side right here is 4 root 34. This side right here is 4 root 34. And now I need to find x. Again, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So I have 12 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. This becomes 288 equals x squared. Take the square root, and now I need to simplify. This becomes 144 multiplied by 2. 144 is 12 and 12. That's a pair. So I have x equals 12 root 2. You actually should have been able to see that without doing the Pythagorean theorem because those two triangles are 45, 45, 90 triangles. But you can still do Pythagorean theorem. So AT is going to be 12 root 2. RA is also going to be 12 root 2. Um, I'm not finished yet because the question asks, what is the perimeter? So now I need to add up the sides. I have 4 root 34 plus 4 root 34 plus 12 root 2 plus 12 root 2. These are like terms because they have the same number under the root. 4 root 34 add 4 root 34 becomes 8 root 34. These are the same because they have the same number under the root. That becomes 24 root 2. And that's my answer. That could not be simplified at all. So leave it like that. Um, if you would like to know what that is as a decimal, that's about 80.59. Looking at example 5, this is similar. It says calculate the perimeter of the kite. So I would like you to try this one on your own. Pause the video. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Um, sorry. You know that these are right triangles, so you're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. My first one I have is 8 squared plus 9 squared equals x squared. This becomes 145 equals x squared. Take the square root. That cannot be broken down at all, so that's this side, root 145. That's also this side, root 145. It's because they have the same base and the same height. They both have 9 and 8 as sides of the triangle. And now I have 9 squared plus 7 squared equals y squared. This becomes 130 equals y squared. Uh, again, that can't be broken down. So these two sides are root 130 and root 130. So my perimeter, when I add up all the sides, becomes 2 root 145 
plus 2 root 130, which is about 46.89. So hopefully that one went well for you. If it didn't, hopefully we just made a, a small mistake that we now can see. Um, last topic we have to talk about in, the, in this video is the trapezoid mid-segment. So again, this just applies to trapezoids, doesn't apply to kites. Uh, the trapezoid mid-segment connects the midpoints of the two legs it's parallel to the bases and it's also the average of the bases. So the length of the mid-segment is the average of the bases. So looking at example 6, it says how long is TS? So I'm going to mark that X. I know that RM is a mid-segment this is a midpoint because it bisects the leg. This is a midpoint because it bisects the other leg. So the first thing I know is that this midsegment is parallel to my two bases. And now I know that it's the average of the two bases. So the midsegment, 38.5, is the average of the two bases. Remember that to find an average, you add them up and divide by how many there are. There's two bases. So I'm going to add them up, 26 plus x, and divide by 2 and now solve. I'm going to put 38.5 over 1 so that I can do cross products. 38.5 multiplied by 2 gives me 77. So I have 77 equals 26 plus x. If I subtract 26 I get 51 equals x. So TS equals 51. So let's move on and try another example. Okay, example number seven, I would like you to try on your own. Pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Okay, let's see how we did. Again, this is a mid-segment because M and N are both midpoints. I know that my mid-segment, 2x minus 1, is equal to the average of the bases. So 44 plus 10 over 2. I'm going to put that over 1. So I have 2 multiplied by 2x minus 1 equals 54. Distributing the 2, I get 4x minus 2 equals 54. So 4x equals 56. So x equals 14. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully we just made a small mistake. Um, so I know we learned about a lot in this video, but this video primarily covered trapezoids and kites. We learned about the various properties of trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids, the properties of kites, and then we also learned about the, um, the, tri the trapezoid mid-segment. So you have one extra problem to do this problem right here, that I will be checking when you come to class tomorrow. You are asked to find the, the measures of angles U and S. Um, there's a few more properties, or a few more problems on the next page that I'm going to go over if you would like to go over them. If you would like to, please flip the page and continue with me. Okay, so number eight says determine whether ABCD represents a trapezoid. Um, so before we even start to talk about this, let's just plot the points. So A is 2, 1, B is 6, 1, C is 3, negative 3, and D is negative 1, negative 4. I'm sorry, this should be D. Okay. Now we need to think, what is true of a trapezoid? Well, the main important property of a trapezoid is that it has one pair of parallel sides. 
So I need to see, is it true that this figure has one pair of parallel sides? Well, I don't know. So the first pair of sides is going to be AB and then CD. Remember, M is slope, so I'm going to calculate the slope of AB and the slope of CD. Slope is how we determine if sides are parallel. So for AB, I have 1 subtract 1 over 2 subtract 6. This becomes 0 over negative 4, which is 0. For CD, I have negative 3 subtract negative 4 over 3 subtract negative 1. This becomes 1 over 4. So I have found out that AB is not parallel to CD. That's okay. Um, I could have a different pair of sides that are parallel. I could have BC being parallel to AD. So that's what I have to do next is BC and AD. For BC, I have 1 subtract negative 3 over 6 subtract 3. This becomes 4 thirds. For AD, I have 1 subtract negative 4 over 2 subtract negative 1. This becomes 5 over 3. So I just found out that BC is not parallel to AD. So I have no pairs of parallel sides, so this is not a trapezoid. So I'm going to say ABCD is not a trapezoid because there are no pairs of parallel sides. And then one more. It says calculate the value of x. Again, we see that we have a trapezoid mid-segment. It connects two midpoints, midpoints m and n. So I know that the mid-segment, the 32, is equal to the average of the bases. So 4x plus 43 over 2. Remember the averages add, divide by 2. I'm going to put 32 over 1 so I can do cross products. I get 64 equals 4x plus 43. If I subtract 43, I get 21 equals 4x, so x is equal to 21 over 4. So hopefully these extra examples helped um, clear up any confusion that we had. Please make sure you do that last problem and bring any questions that you have to class. Questions about the properties, about the mid-segment, um, about kites, whatever you may have, bring them to class so that we can answer those before starting the classwork. Thank you and see you tomorrow.